This is the first video of section 3.3 talking about measures of relative position. The first measure of relative position we'd like to talk about is the percentiles. And essentially what we do in a percentile is we take all of our data and we divide it up into 100 parts. And 100 is simply because we're dealing with a percentile, which means per 100 is percent means per 100. So if we're trying to find the data value, essentially what we need to know is the location. So the location is going to be found by taking the data value that we have and multiply that by the percent over 100, or the percent is decimal. If you end up with a decimal value for L, the location is the next larger whole number, and if it results in a whole number, then you are finding the arithmetic mean, which is just the average, of the data value in that location and the next larger location. If instead you're trying to find the percentile of a particular value, then we're going to take um, L divided by N times 100, which is really just an algebraic manipulation of the original formula that we were looking at. So let's take a look at how this is used. For finding the actual data value, the first thing I'm going to do is note that I have 135 different vehicles. And obviously, this information is given in a stem and leaf plot, which is one of my least favorite displays. But that's okay, at least all of the data is visible to us here. So this tells me that n is equal to 135. n is the number of data values. Now, if I'm trying to find the 10th percentile, again, I'm going to put 10 over 100, or you can also just write it as 0.10 because that would be the 10th percentile. So what this is going to look like then is I'm going to take 135, which is N, times 10 over 100 or times 0 0.10. Whichever way I do it, I get 13.5. Now remember, it says if you end up with a decimal, round up. So we end up with 14. So here's what that means. I want to find the 14th value in my data. So I would start with 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. So that is my 14th value. Now keep in mind the key says that 12 and then the bar and then 1 means 12.1. So this means 17.3. So the value is uh, position 14, which is 17.3 miles per gallon. Now, what exactly does that mean? That means 17.3 is greater than or equal to 10% of our data. So if you just look at the data that we have here, that pretty much makes sense that we're saying 10% is here, which leaves the other 90% here. So now let's look at the 20th percentile. So if I'm looking at the 20th percentile, I'm doing the exact same thing, except for 10 is going to become 20. Now keep in mind here, I get a whole number. So on the first one, I rounded to 14, and the instruction said that if I got a decimal, then I round, and then I just take the one in that position. Now, if I get a whole number, I'm going to find the 27th and the 28th value and average them. So we already had counted to 14 um, here. So 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, and then here's 27 and 28. So I have 19.2 and 19.3, and I'm going to average those to get 19.25 miles per gallon. Again, what does that mean? That means 19.25 miles per gallon is greater than or equal to 20% of our data. Now we might instead be looking in reverse. So in this one, we actually have to find what is the percentile and in this case, we're looking at the Nissan Xterra that averaged 21.1 miles per gallon. So let's take a look at 21.1. It seems that there are two of them. 
So if there are two of them, I'm going to essentially count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42, 43, 44, 45, 46, 47. That's 48th and 49th. So now we're going to pick the one with the largest location value, which is obviously 49. That's the number that I'm going to use in my equation. So P, which is the percent uh, percentile that we're trying to find, is location, which is 49, divided by N, which is still 135, times 100. And that gives me 36.296. And we're just going to round that to a whole number, which is just 36. So what does that mean? The approximately 36% of the data values are less than or equal to the Xterra's miles per gallon rating, or that 21.1 .1 is in the 36th percentile of the data set. Now that we're becoming familiar with finding percentiles, let's talk about the quartiles. The quartiles are simply special percentiles. So if I'm trying to find the first quartile, that's the 25th percentile. The second quartile is the 50th percentile, also known, as you know, as the median. And the third quartile is the 75th percentile. So again, notice we're just going to be using Q1, Q2, or more often median and Q3. So typically when someone's talking about the quartiles, they're talking about Q1 and Q3 as the median, um, which is Q2, is usually just called the median. So what would I have to do to find the quartiles? Again, the exact same thing I've been doing using 25 and 50 and 75. So for the first quartile, I get N, which is 135 times 25 over 100, which is about 34 which tells me 19.8, so I'm not going to count those out, but that is the quartile. The second quartile, or 50th percentile, is the median. And again, that's 50 over 100, which gives me 68. Now, which value is 68? It's 23.6. It's one of those in here. I'm not going to count them out. And the third quartile, or 75th percentile, 75 over 100 times 135, and gives me 102. Which value is 102? 25.3. Again, one of these. Now, the way that we just found the quartiles were using the percentile method, obviously. We were finding the percentile and then counting through. I'm also going to show you something called the approximation method, which works nicer if we're dealing with a smaller data set like I have here. So if I'm dealing with a smaller data set, essentially what I'm going to do is find the median first. So I'm just going to count in like I did before. And I end up with two values when I count it in. Remember that when I get two values, I find the average. So the average between 70 and 71 is 7.5, 70.5. And then, so this is Q2 or the median. Then I'm going to do the same thing with each half of data. And so again, I'm looking at 60 into 70, 62 and 67, 63 and 65, and that leaves me with a Q1 of 65. And then again, counting in from the outsides, I end up with 78 for Q3. It works the same when you have an odd number of values. So again, it's important that these are ordered. So if they're not ordered, you have to order them first. I didn't feel like doing all of the ordering with you. So if you end up with a Q2 or median, that is one of your data values. Essentially, you just don't use it on either side. So now I'm looking at this as one half of data. And again, I'm going to count in from the outside to get 67. And again, I'm going to count in from the outsides to get 79. So that would be Q1 and Q3. We're now going to use Excel to find the quartiles. And then I'm going to point out to you how things can be a little bit different with Excel. 
So if I'm using Excel, it's very important that I know whether or not it's an even number of values or an odd number of values. So here, notice I've got 2 to 15, which is an even number of values. There's 14 values. So I'm going to choose the inclusive. So I can either use quartile inclusive, choose the array, and then choose the quartile 0, 1, 2, 3, or 4. So quartile 0 is the minimum and quartile 4 is the maximum. The same value can be found if I use percentile inclusive. But again, I'm going to choose the array as I did before, but then I'm going to use 0.25 because I want the 25th percentile. So as you can see, I get the same value whether I'm using percentile or quartile. So now I'm going to use um, the quartile again. Oops. And then I want the second quartile. And again, remember this can also be the median because that's what the second quartile is. It's going to be the exact same thing. And then for the third quartile, I'm going to use equals quartile inclusive and get that, whoops, I didn't get the three, comma three. Now, if you'll notice, I've got a little bit of a discrepancy and that's what I'm talking about when I say Microsoft Excel uses a little bit different of a method when finding the quartiles. So let's go ahead and do this as well for my other data set and I'm just going to cheat a little bit and copy and paste and then, oops, I'm not going to do that because I forgot this one needs to be exclusive. So I'm going to be quartile exclusive because I'm dealing with an odd number of values and then one. And then if you'll notice now I'm going to cheat a little bit and I'm just going to drag this down, but you have to be careful when you drag and drop because notice this is now B3 to B17 and I want B2 to B16 and I want the second quartile and then B2 to B16. So I just was trying to save myself a little bit of typing. Now, if you'll notice for the exclusive, for the number of odd values, I got all of the same values. Now, this one was a little bit different because it, it basically measures that center value just a little bit differently. So it's better to do it by hand, frankly, than to use Excel just because Excel uses this different method of calculation. I wanted to include some of the descriptive statistics that we have found in Excel. All of those that I've highlighted in blue are also found when you use just the data analysis tool to find all of the summary statistics, um, but we can use the actual um, functions that I've listed here to find any of those values as well. We're going to continue our study of relative position next by taking a look at the five number summary, which is related to our quartiles, and box plots.